Okay, I want to introduce you all to the magnificent Honorable Chad Abbott, who is our conference minister and who has been gracious enough to fill in for Pastor Monica today in her absence on vacation. And I'll turn it over to Chad. You're on, sir. Well, good afternoon, uh, Lynnhurst United Church of Christ. It is a joy to be with you. Uh, I wish, I wish, I wish I could be with you there in person in your building. I know we've all kind of longed for that, but I bring you greetings on behalf of the conference uh, from my home here in Indianapolis. Um, I live here on the southeast side of town. Um, I have a wife named Shannon and uh, son and daughter, 10 and 14, you can pray for us. Uh, so we are, we, I am delighted to be with you. It's been so long since I've been with you, maybe a couple of years now, uh, but it is a joy to be with you this morning as Monica takes a little time for reprieve and rest and time with family. So it is a, it is joy to be with you today and looking forward to worshiping with you. And this is the day that God has made. So let us rejoice and be glad in it and worship together. Uh, let's see here. Hmm. It is not. There we go. Okay. Can everybody see that? Okay. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. All right. We're going to go to the call to worship here, where I will be obviously the pastor, and you guys will join with me in the all. Sing of God's mercy and grace. Sing, Sing of God's God strength and might. might. Praise God with laughter and joy. Praise, Praise God, God with feasting and dancing. For God brings forth justice and righteousness. Sing of God's God God mercy, mercy and, grace. and grace. Let us worship God with our hands, hearts, and voices this afternoon. Now I ask you to join with me in a time of prayer. We're going to, I'm going to pray this prayer of confession. There's also uh, just a, a brief word of, of assurance. Um, one of the things that I like to do when I do times of confession and assurance is, is spend just a little bit of time in some silence for you all to share your own confessions before God. God is merciful and compassionate and forgiving. And so, uh, but we also come to God and worship as, as imperfect beings. So it is important for us to name together uh, where we have fallen short not only as a community, but as individuals. So what I'd like to do is just spend a brief couple of seconds here um, in personal, private, um, and silent prayer, and then I will lead us in this time of confession and assurance. Won't you join me in prayer? Let us pray. O merciful God, we are ever in need of your mercy and of grace. When we have hurt another person, may we make it right. When we laugh at others' misfortunes, may we seek forgiveness. When we belittle the weak, O oh, humble us. When we speak harsh words, may we find words of encouragement to share. Please forgive us and help us walk with hope. Amen. Friends in Christ, know that you are a child of God and rejoice that you are indeed forgiven. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks be to, to God. God. Our scripture reading for this afternoon, I keep wanting to say this morning, that's just the natural inclination when yes. you're leading worship. <laughs> um, this afternoon, our scripture comes to us from the, the Exodus uh, story which is, as you've seen there on the screen, is the story of Moses leading them through the Red Sea on dry ground. And I have to tell you, I've, I've actually been to the base of the Red Sea, and it is just enormous and huge. So um, this is a, a rather prolific story in the life of the Hebrew, um, Hebrew Testament and the Hebrew story. So we'll begin with verse 14, verses 19 through 31. I invite you to prepare your hearts and listen for God's word. Then the angel of God, who had been leading the people of Israel, moved to the rear of the camp. The pillar of cloud also moved from the front and stood behind them. The, cl the cloud settled between the Egyptian and Israelite camps. 
as darkness fell, the cloud turned to fire, lighting up the night. <clears throat> but the Egyptians and Israelites did not approach each other all night. Then Moses raised his hand over the sea, and the Lord opened up a path through the water with a strong east wind. The wind blew all that night, turning the seabed into dry land. So the people of Israel walked through the middle of the sea on dry ground with walls of water on each side. Then the Egyptians, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and charioteers, chased them into the middle of the sea. But just before dawn, the Lord looked down on the Egyptian army from the pillar of fire and cloud, and he threw their forces into total confusion. He twisted their chariot wheels, making their chariots difficult to drive. Let's get out of here, away from these Israelites, the Egyptians shouted. The Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. When the Israelites had reached the other side, the Lord said to Moses, raise your hand over the sea again. Then the waters will rush back and cover the Egyptians and their chariots and charioteers. So as the sun began to rise, Moses raised his hand over the sea and the water rushed back into its usual place. The Egyptians tried to escape, but the Lord swept them into the sea. And then the waters returned and covered all the chariots and charioteers the entire army of Pharaoh, all of the Egyptians who had chased the Israelites into the sea, not a single one survived. But the people of Israel had walked through the middle of the sea on dry ground as the water stood up like a wall on both sides. That is how the Lord rescued Israel from the hand of the Egyptians <laughs> that day. And the Israelites saw the bodies of the Egyptians washed up on the seashore when the people of Israel saw the mighty power that the Lord had unleashed against the Egyptians, they were filled with awe before him. They put their faith in the Lord and in his servant Moses. My dear friends, this is God's word for God's people. May God add understanding to the reading of this word. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, before I share with you uh, my preached word this morning, I think that uh, Kirby is going to lead us in some special, special music. Okay, uh, I will just be playing a piece of special music. Kirby. Really appreciate that. 
As I begin to share with you my preached word this morning, I invite you to pray with me as we have now listened for God's word and now we'll receive the preached word. Let us pray together. Our loving and gracious creator, we give you thanks for this time together, for this scripture that calls us forth to listen to you. May your Holy Spirit be upon each of us as we listen this day Speak to us, O God. Allow us to have ears and eyes that can hear you afresh and anew. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Well, I don't know about any of you, but I am a huge fan of storytelling. I love to tell stories. I love to listen to stories. And I love to read stories. And so one of the reasons that I and value stories so much is I think that they have the power to heal and the power to transform and the power for us to hear and see from God in new and fresh ways. Uh, the scriptures themselves are filled with stories that remind us of the ways and path and love of God. And so when we uh, turn to these moments where we really struggle or we really want to hear from God, it is um, imperative that we do spend a little time in scripture to see where it is that God was on that journey with the Israelites and with the people of God and Jesus and Jesus' disciples. And today we uh, have one of those stories. It's, a, it's, it's really smack dab in the middle of a very important story in the Hebrew Testament of our scriptures. But before we get to that, I wanna talk to you a little bit about um, the nature of story. Uh, stories don't just come out of, of, of nowhere. There, there's a pattern to them, and the pattern for stories is such that there's typically a beginning and a middle and an end, right? I mean, that seems rather simple, um, and perhaps that's too simplistic, but the way that I like to think of it is uh, when you think of a particular character, if you watch a movie or you read a really good book, there's a very clear pattern that you can, dis you can discern, and that pattern begins with um, being able to take a look at the context for which a particular character might find themselves. So for the example this morning, we think of someone like Moses, and even though Moses' story that we're, we encountered today, um, that story didn't uh, start right there. That story actually started earlier uh, with his mother putting him in a basket and putting him down the Nile River. And so their, their context was that of Egypt, right? And so the story tells a little bit of that context in the beginning of the book of Exodus. And where we read today is in the middle, about chapter 14. And so the beginning of this particular story, the beginning of most stories, begins with just setting a context for where that story begins, what is all around it, and, and who the identity of that particular character is, or set of characters. And then the next step is that somewhere in the middle of that context, that character or set of characters uh, comes into a moment of crisis. Uh, their context is challenged in some way, they experience some sort of disorientation, and then what they, they go on what they call like the hero's journey. They are called to face that, um, that challenge or that that testing in some way, that crisis in some way. And that testing, that, that middle space is what I like to call um, the messy middle. Uh, somewhere in the middle, they are not only face a crisis, but then have to go on a journey and face and be tested uh, their, their moral character, their, their livelihood, their sense of identity is challenged in some way. And it go, there are places where it might be rather difficult and rather challenging. The terrain might be rugged or they might have to face their own internal demons or they might have to face uh, an enemy of some sort. And they have to then overcome that particular experience of being in that messy middle. So the beginning tends to set the context. The middle is this rather challenging space where there's a lot of uncertainty. Will the character actually make it uh, through that which tests them and challenges them? 
And of course, then there's the ending, which is sometimes is, um, you know, in a, in a tragedy, it doesn't end well. In, 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 in those other stories of, of hope and peace and joy and possibility, uh, it does resolve itself in a way that is good for the character. But there's always some sort of ending one way or another that hopes to help resolve whatever the challenge and testing might be. So no matter what story you are reading uh, or watching on your television, or even in your reading of scripture, there tends to be this flow. It's like a little arch that goes down into the messy middle and comes up the other side in some sort of resolution. Every good bit of fiction is gonna function like that, no matter what uh, the story might be. And so you arrive in the new. Uh, there's the old, there's the middle, and there's the new. And so let's talk about that in light of today's lesson. Uh, when we think about that, that story arc, uh, if you will, we think of Moses who um, was, was given away by his mother uh, in that basket and raised in the courts of the pharaohs, but ends up being called out. And you'll, you'll recall him being called out into the middle of the desert um, by the burning bush, and God says to him, I want you to go and call my people free, like go and confront the Pharaoh. And of course, um, Moses, like many of us, trembled a little bit in fear, and he said, wait a minute, I don't, I don't speak so well. I don't know that I should be the right, I don't know that I'm the right person. But God said, don't worry, I'll provide you with the words. And of course, then Moses does go and confront uh, the Pharaoh to say, let my people go. And of course, you know that, you more, more than likely, most of you know that story of the Passover and how God came and released them. And the scripture that we have read for today, which uh, is the parting of the Red Sea, uh, begins um, uh, and ends with them being right at the edge of the Red Sea. And it talks about the two camps uh, being split and that there was this pillar of fire and cloud um, kind of hovering between them. I like to think of, of this space, um, this today's lesson is actually in between uh, two very clear uncertainties for the people of Israel. Um, and so I want to talk about those two uncertainties. The first uncertainty is that God had indeed allowed them to be set free by the Pharaoh, but they actually hit the bottom of the Red Sea, the beginning of this passage, and there they were, and they looked upon the sea, and they had nowhere to go. Um, how are we going to get out of this is essentially how they were feeling. And um, they prayed to God, how, you know, where is there going to be a path away uh, if all we have on one side of us is the sea, and on the other side, the army of the Pharaoh? They did almost felt like there was no way out. And the other side of the Red Sea is the other uncertainty. So you, we know the story from today. They passed through the Red Sea on dry ground. God had parted the way through Moses. And they end up arriving, which is the other, which is another side, which is another passage um, for another day. <laughs> but they end up on the other side of the Red Sea, and they face another uncertainty. And that is, um, on the one side, they have the sea again, right? The, that which came before them. They had just passed through it. And they got to the other side, and on the one side they have the sea, and on the other side is nothing but wilderness and desert. Um, if any of you have been to the Middle East and been to that part of the world, which I have been, I've crossed over the Red Sea and gotten to that part of, of the desert. It is arid, it is dry, it is, um, there's not a home and <laughs> much of anything in sight, it is hot. And there they stood on the other side of the Red Sea, God had indeed delivered them, but there they stood in the midst of that, knowing that there is a promised land that God had given them to go. And they, all they could see was the uncertainty of the desert and the wilderness ahead of them. And you might recall that the first thing that happened, be, besides rejoicing that they, God had delivered them through the sea, uh, they began to quarrel with God and with Moses. And they told Moses, we want to go back. <laughs> the uncertainty of the desert said to them, we don't, want, we don't know where we're going or where we're headed. We want to go back because we at least know what we can expect back in Egypt. And so there's these two uncertainties that they face, one side of the sea and on the other side of the sea. 
And so today's lesson is about um, how God uh, moves them through places of uncertainty. So that part of the story for which uh, we are talking about today, um, they are uh, facing that messy middle. God has taken them in, into, into this crisis and helping them to face the unknown. And so they are in what I like to call the messy middle or what Brene Brown calls the messy middle. Uh, that, so she likes to think of it as like day two. If you've been, ever, any of you have ever gone to um, a three-day conference, uh, I don't know if you have, but I have, and you get to day one, Brene Brown says, and everyone's excited for the journey. Uh, lots of new material. You know, you've got your um, you've got your list of things that you're going to address in the in the three day lecture and seminar, and everyone is excited and they dive in, right? But then you get to day two, she says, and day two is this messy middle where you really everyone's exhausted. The material is is daunting. You don't know how you're going to come out the other side, and it's just tiring. And you begin to face this uncertainty. And then day three, you come out the other side. Uh, day two is really about this messy middle where you have to confront some things within yourself, within your community, within uh, the world. And you're tested, just like the, the Israelites are tested in the middle of the wilderness. They get to the other side and they're moving through this Red Sea. The Red Sea moves them towards this testing, this uncertainty that is ahead of them. And uh, so this is the, the messy middle. Uh, it is the beginning of the messy middle, this part departure through the middle of the Red Sea. And so as they go through this uh, uh, on dry ground, God parts both ways on dry ground. And so the, the beginning of the messy middle is them walking through. Now, I don't know about you, but um, the first thing I would be thinking as I'm walking through that Red Sea, and I'm, I'm just as human as the next person is probably, oh my goodness, is this happening? And will these walls that are to my sides on my left and right, are they going to cave in on me as we walk through? I, I just have a little bit of trepidation and anxiety just imagining it. Uh, maybe you do as well. But the beginning of going through this messy middle where, where God really tests us, where we are tested in the wilderness, begins by trusting God to take us through the Red Sea. Even though we might have anxiety, even though we might be uncertain, even though we're not sure this is the right path at all, God brings us through. It is the beginning of the messy middle. Um, and it will be a hard journey. We notice that it's going to be a hard journey facing lots of anxiety because we don't know where we are going, right? Uh, this is part of, of faith, is it not, right? And trusting is that if we knew exactly what the future would hold, if we knew exactly uh, what was ahead of us, it wouldn't be faith. It would be more certainty. But God calls us into that Red Sea, and onto the other side of uncertainty, that we might trust God, that we might put our full trust in God to take us where God is moving us, even though it doesn't, we don't know where we're going. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm a person that likes to know if I'm going to get in a car or if I'm going to go on a journey, I like to know that there's some where I'm headed. So I, I thank God that in the 21st century, there's GPS and technology and maps, things that aren't going to leave me alone. But you can imagine what it might have been like uh, to be walking through that Red Sea, get to the other side and not have a clue what it might be. No wonder they said to Moses and to God, what have you done to take us out here in the middle of the desert to kill us of hunger and of heat? and of dehydration, uh, we want to go back. <laughs> so it's very easy, uh, very, very easy when, when the journey that we are on as human beings gets rough and tough and difficult, that we want to return to that which is difficult, or that which is easy, and that which we know is safe and secure. But God, think about God, is God does give us the assurance that we will be okay, and, and that we will be surrounded by God, that doesn't mean that the uncertainties or the fears or the anxieties we carry as we walk through that Red Sea on dry ground are not still there. They are, but the pillar of cloud walks with us. The presence of God walks with us. 
My friends, I have to admit that we are in the middle of a messy middle in this world, are we not? <laughs> what, a, what a world we are living in. Just six to eight months ago, if you had told me that we would be facing all the things that we are facing, I might have given you a good laugh in the face. I might have given my own self uh, and the world a good laugh in the face at those realities. We are facing a global health pandemic which, you know, I think at the beginning of this, many of us thought maybe might have lasted a couple of weeks or a couple of months. Um, but I think that the health professionals knew uh, that was not going to be the case. But here we are nearly seven months later, and we are still not out of the woods of this. We are, we are actually, I would say, perhaps beginning the messy middle of this pandemic. Um, I think if you follow the science and the data, it does seem to indicate that we may not see ourselves through this for quite many more months ahead of us. And that brings not only anxiety and uncertainty, um, but it, allow, it certainly brings up within, a, within us an unknown and uncertain future. So we are in the middle of this pandemic with no end in sight, and um, we are trying to wonder how will we see what comes next. We are also in the middle of uh, a time in our country where we are reckoning with the issue of race. A uh, variety of places across the country have wrestled in their own city, including ours of Louisville, Kentucky, about what it means for us to address the issue of race. We are also in the middle of an election season, <laughs> which I, I don't uh, aim to be political in any way in this sermon, except just to acknowledge that, boy, is it's hard enough for us to do elections when we don't have a pandemic, but boy, is it ever challenging and difficult as we think about that which is ahead. And that brings certainly a lots of anxiety over what might happen post November the 3rd. I have no idea what, what will happen. And, and so we are in the middle, uh, the messy middle of all of this, not quite knowing how, uh, how to heal, how to transform, and how to come out on the other side, uh, following in the way and pathway and love of God. And so just for us to be able to acknowledge that that is in fact where we are, and that we aren't sure where we're headed, it places us right there in the middle of that Red Sea, walking forward, God giving us a path, but us not being able to quite see where it is ahead of us that we are headed. So we're in that messy middle, and the question might be, how are we going to face the uncertainty of this time? Well, there's one good thing. Uh, we're not the first ones to have to face that uncertain future. We're, we're not the first ones to have to go through the messy middle and to face uncertainty. And thank God we have great stories across the life of our holy scriptures that give us wisdom and insight into a journey of this kind of nature. Um, and so we actually have a scripture that tells us that very story here for today to remind us of one very important thing that I hope we will all take away from today, which is we are not alone. We might be in our homes. Um, we have, and many of us have been in, in our homes uh, and not gone out much since March. Um, and it does feel lonely. Um, we're not in church together. Uh, we're not doing what we consider to be normal. Um, and human beings were made for connection and for being together. And so this time for us, especially as church, of not being together, um, it can feel very lonely. But these texts tell us that even in that moment, we are not alone. So there are two things from this passage that I want to highlight for us as we uh, think about where is God and how do we understand ourselves as God's people in this uncertainty. The first is, you will notice that the scriptures actually refer to the cloud of pillar and fire, right? That image, that's a very important image in the Bible because throughout the Hebrew text, beginning in Genesis, as well as now moving into Exodus and on through the first five uh, texts of the Bible, uh, that image of the 
the pillar of cloud and of fire is one of God's presence, God leading them. And so when it says that God, the, the, the pillar of cloud and fire led them through the Red Sea and onto the other side, it is to say that God never left them alone, but was with them through it all. And the second um, uh, thing that I'd like to highlight is that no one person in the Israelite, the Hebrew people, had to walk through that Red Sea alone. They had each other. So they had God and they had each other. And I'd like to, to just share uh, with you today that though we may feel at times alone, we have the pillar of cloud and a fire, the presence of God to walk through this time with us. And we have each other. We may be on Zoom today, um, but there are so many ways that we have learned to be with each other. And so we have faced many things, many challenges, many testings during this time, haven't we? Um, fear and anxiety. We've faced grief. We've lost loved ones. Um, we've faced uh, health crises. And there are all kinds of things that we could probably name together that we have individually and collectively faced. But no matter what we have faced, no matter what uncertainty we continue to face in the future, we have the pillar of cloud and presence of God to walk with us, and we have each other to walk with us. And so we must rely on and trust fully in that presence of God, and we must trust in each other and take care of each other. Now, though we may want to turn, I have to say, I'm, I don't like the messy middle. <laughs> I don't like uncertainty. I like, I'm, I'm kind of a person of certainty. I wanna know uh, where I'm headed. But I have to say that part of the thing that's, a be that's beautiful about being a person of faith is that being in the middle of that uncertainty, though we may want to turn back to Egypt and that which may seem faith, safe, God calls us to step out in faith into that unknown and uncertain future, to trust fully in God, and to trust that our neighbor, one another, is there to care for us also. We are not alone. You are not alone. We trust that as God has parted the way, made a way which seemed out of no way as they looked at the Red Sea, God provided a way. And when they hit the other side and they looked at the, the middle of this wilderness and said, I don't know, Moses provided them uh, water and manna. God is a God that provides. And even though we can't see what's ahead of us, friends, God will provide a way. Know that the presence of God that walked with the Israelites walks with you. And know that you have a community that surrounds you. And may those assurances go with you this week and always. What a gift it has been to be with you all this afternoon. May God go with you on your journey, Lynnhurst. Amen. And with you too. All right. Thank you so much for letting me share God's word with you this day. And I will ask Kirby to engage us in some time of singing. This particular hymn, um, Guide Us, O Thou Great Jehovah, is a, a uh, hymn that addresses the Israelites that are going through this uh, kind of wilderness period and that God will never leave, leave them alone. So Kirby, would you lead us? I'm going to have to share my screen here so that you have the words. So let me give me a quick, quick minute here. Oops. All right. Whenever you're ready, Kirby.
Amen. Wonderful. As we turn to God in prayer, I have the Lord's Prayer up here for us, that, which we will pray after I uh, lead us in the pastoral prayer. But I ask you to join our hearts together as I lead us in the pastoral prayer, followed by the Lord's Prayer. Will you join me? Oh, our loving Creator, we thank you for this day which you have given us, for the gift of community that binds us together in Jesus Christ, and in the pillar of cloud and of fire that leads us all the way through our life's journey. I thank you for the gift that is this time together, for the community of church that is Lynnhurst United Church of Christ. I pray your many blessings upon their leadership and upon Monica as their pastor and the various ways they serve their community in Louisville. God, we pray this day for those who are members of their parish, who may need uh, your healing touch, those who may be in the hospital, those who may be shut in, those who may be struggling with various health crises. You know their circumstances, and we pray for your, your healing love and your healing touch to surround them and for those that care for them. We pray, O oh God, for your world. We know what a world this is that we are in. It's the messy middle, oh God, and there are so many things to pray for from world hunger to matters of racism to ways in which our, our world is so disconnected and divided from each other, families and political parties so divided from each other, for the ways in which uh, our, our schools are engaged in trying to teach children and just how hard it is during this time, for those who are caring for loved ones during this time as they transition from one life into the next. Oh God, all of these moments, they're very challenging and difficult. We pray, oh God, for your world, for peace, for justice, for your healing hands to surround us. We pray for the leaders of our world, for those in our country that lead at the local and state and national levels, for those who lead throughout the world in their own communities and governments. May your Holy Spirit provide them with wisdom as they nurture and seek to lead. And we do need leadership during this time, oh God, there's so much uncertainty. Give us eyes to see and ears to hear that we may hear and listen and see where you might be guiding us, oh God. We pray for all those who feel lonely at this time. May they be surrounded with your arms of love and care. May there be those in their lives that surround them in friendship. May phone calls be made and Zoom calls be made so that they may not feel alone. God, in this time, we know we are never alone because your pillar of cloud and of fire walks with us, journeys with us, and we have each other, the church. May you bless us as we journey into this uncertain time, and may we rest in the assurance that we never, ever face this time alone. 
We pray these things in and through your son, Jesus Christ, who came to show us the way and the truth and the life and who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, Our Father who art in heaven, 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 holy is your, your name. Your kingdom, kingdom come. Your, kingdom come. your, your will, will be done on earth as it is, as it is in heaven. Give us, Give us this day our daily bread. Our daily bread. Daily bread. And forgive, and forgive us, us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not, not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and, and the glory, glory forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Amen, dear friends. <laughs> At this time, I just invite you to share uh, in the gift of generosity. Uh, and every service uh, across most Christian churches, it is a way for us to give back that which God has given us. I know there are a variety of ways to do that at Lyndhurst, whether that's mailing in a check or doing so online. Um, God invites us at this time to give as we feel so led to do so. So I encourage you in whatever way um, you, you do that in your own life, uh, that you would be uh, doing so at this time. I also would be amiss if I didn't express my deep gratitude for your generosity as, as a, a, a part of the Indiana Kentucky Conference. I mean, we, we are all in this together, aren't we? we? We can never do this alone. Our ministries, we cannot do our ministry at the conference without you. And we, I, I know that you all need us as we journey through this together. So thank you for your giving to us as we share in the ministry of loving and serving like Jesus together. Before we close today, I want to share with you uh, what it is that we do, know, do now. That's, I know, something that Monica shared with me. She shares with you each week. Just a brief word of how we go forth from here. So I wanted to say to you, um, first of all, thank you for having me with you. Um, but I also want to say, um, this is a, a hard journey. And I am grateful that, that we do not have to do this alone. And so I want to encourage you with two things. Um, when, God, when it says that God uh, was a pillar of fire and of cloud, it was a visible way for the people of Israel to see God as they went through their hardships and hard times. And so I want to encourage you to look this week for the pillar and cloud that is around you. Obviously, I'm speaking metaphorically, but I also think that God does show up in very real, tangible, and physical ways. It may not be a cloud or a pillar of fire, but it might look like something different in your life. So I encourage you, first of all, to look for that physical manifestation of God who says to you, you're not alone and I'm with you. And the second thing I would say, uh, where do we go from here and what do we do now, is we are not alone because we have each other. Um, that means something, doesn't it? Because we have each other, it means that we need to call upon each other uh, either call upon each other when we need something, either need prayer or support, or out of the goodness of our heart to reach out to our neighbor to say, how are you doing? I know you've had a hard time, or I know that you've been going through a, a rough week. How are you doing? How can I be praying for you? So look for God and look for ways in which you can support a neighbor. And now let me share with you just some of the announcements that are here, and I'll give our benediction uh, for the day. Lynnhurst is donating two baskets to help raise money for Brooklawn and Bellwood. So we're collecting items for a dog themed and a cat themed basket. Well, that sounds amazing. I've got a dog and I saw a cat on, this, on the screen earlier today. Uh, <laughs> please bring in lots of fun stuff that we can put in these baskets. They can be anything from like treats and toys and tools for the pets or their humans. Uh, you can bring items in on Friday mornings or use your key and leave them on the table in the fellowship hall doorway. The deadline is October the 9th, so that's coming up. So uh, give, give some thought to that and give generously. Um, Lynnhurst is also holding a yard sale in our parking lot on Saturday the 3rd, October the 3rd. 
the proceeds will go uh, to SLCM. I'm not quite sure I know what that is, but I'm sure Not you the local community ministries. There we go. Thank you. I, I figured somebody knew what it was. <laughs> um, I, can I uh, so you can bring in good and gently used items uh, to put in on the table, them on the table in the, in the fellowship hall doorway as well. And we give thanks that Monica can have a little bit of time away and she uh, will be back and returns Monday evening. We pray for her safety as she returns uh, to be with us. Friends, I want to thank you for allowing me to be with you here today. I'm gonna to stop sharing my screen for the moment. And uh, Kirby, did you wanna say something? Just waiting. No, you're just waiting. Okay, good, all right. Um, so I wanna share this benediction with you. May you go in God's peace May you go forth into the journey that is ahead of you, an uncertain and unknown journey, with the assurance that God journeys with you and that you are not alone and that your neighbor is there to journey with you as well. May the peace of God that surpasses all understanding surround you this day, now, and go with you forevermore. Amen and amen. 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 Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm going to share Thank a brief word so that we can pass the peace with one another. So in dying, Christ destroyed our death, and in rising, he restores our life. And in giving us his spirit, he grants us peace. May the peace of Christ be with you. And also, and also with you. Amen. Thank you for being with us.